Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. In this video, we're going to talk about soft proofing. This is one in a series of videos I'm doing about printing your photos because it's, um, it's a great way to show your work beyond just our screens. So what is soft proofing? Uh, in short, soft proofing is how we prepare our image for print. If you've ever taken a photo and you looked at it on your screen, you just printed it out, you know, just you know, did file print, shot it out to your printer, it probably looked a bit different. What soft proofing does is it lets us use the software in our computers to look at the photo, make adjustments, considering what paper and printer we're going to use to output the final piece. And so we can make our print look as close as possible to what we have on our screens. Now, if you do not have printer, paper, ICC profiles created or downloaded and installed on your computer, stop right here and go take care of that because soft proofing is not a one-click button and it is specific to a printer paper combination. I've got other videos that explain how to go and get you know, uh, profiles from places like Red River or to create your own with like an X-Rite uh, i1 Studio. So make sure you've got those in place. And then once you do, come and continue with this video and uh, let's go ahead and get started with some soft proofing. I have this photo here in Lightroom that I wanna prepare for print. And the first thing that sometimes throws folks about soft proofing is it's not in the print module. It's in the develop module because soft proofing is all about preparing your image for print. The print module is when you're ready to print. If you're still preparing, we're going to go into the develop module. So in the develop module, up under view, soft proofing, show proof, or the hotkey S, and I'll turn that on. Now, a few things just happened here. Uh, first, and probably most noticeable is the background changed to white. That's a choice that I made, and I'll show you how you can do that. You just right click out on the background and you can choose whatever you like. I choose paper white for two reasons. One is I'm printing on white stock paper, and so I can better visualize what this image is gonna look like on a white piece of paper. And also it's a great visual indicator that I'm in soft proofing mode. Hotkeys are great, but sometimes you hit the wrong one. And if you hit the S key while you're in the develop module and suddenly uh, things start behaving differently or your photo looks really odd, uh, well, changing the background is a great way to know that something very, very obvious has changed. And there is actually a proof preview note up here in the corner, but with so many things on the screen, sometimes that gets lost. Now, some other stuff changed as well. We have some additional controls underneath the histogram. And uh, let's go through those, profile, intent, and simulate paper ink. First is the profile. I mentioned at the top of the video, we're gonna prepare this photo for a specific paper and a specific printer. And so you wanna have those profiles loaded in, or if you need to go fetch another one you haven't told Lightroom about yet, you can go do that here. I'm gonna choose this Red River Picos Gloss P800. So this is Red River Picos Gloss Paper on my Epson P800. So I've got that profile chosen. Next choice I need to make is what's this uh, intent, the color intent. This is how colors are going to be put out to the paper. And honestly, you know, you can hover over these things and you can see the differences between the two. In practice, just click on them both and try them out and see which one you like. So if I click relative, I can see some changes out in the blues, up in the, uh, the sky there, back to perceptual. And I notice it even more so with the bluish cast on the boat. So relative versus perceptual, more of those blues are, are being represented in the perceptual mode. And I actually, for this scene, I kind of like that. I kind of like that additional coolness. So I'm going to leave it at perceptual. Now the last one is simulate paper and ink. Now when I turn this on, the image is going to start looking, you know, kind of bad, you know, quote unquote bad. It gets kind of um, you know, gray and filmy. So before and after. You want to turn this on. What Simulate Paper and Ink is doing is it's telling the software, well, um, this is going to go on physical paper. Try to present to me how it's going to look. And you want these things turned on because from here is when you start to make your adjustments to compensate for the difference between looking at something on a screen versus something with physical ink and physical paper. So with all those choices made, the next thing to do is create a proof copy. You went to a lot of trouble to adjust and craft your image for screen use. You don't want to start messing around with that on your original image. 
We create a proof copy. I'm going to click that now. And it creates a virtual copy. If you're familiar with virtual copies in Lightroom, that's what this button just did. So if I look at my film strip, you're going to see I have a few of these here. But I'm now working on a virtual copy. And what's very nice, I'll press the I key so we can see it's a little bigger. Lightroom adds some additional metadata to it for the profile you've selected as well as the color intent. And that's a really nice touch. I actually really like how Lightroom does this. So in the future, if I ever bring this photo up again, say, hey, I'd like to print this. It's already been soft proofed. It's been set up for this paper and I'm ready to go. I don't have to do any other work. And I know exactly what paper I can print it on. If I decide I want to print this on a different type of paper, I've got more work to do, new virtual copy, all that kind of stuff. Now from here, it's just making adjustments like you would on any photo in the develop module. What we're watching is we're watching what the soft proof is. We're, we're, we're making the adjustments so things look good for the print. And usually what I need to do is add at least a little bit of contrast and usually lose a little bit of clarity with prints. And in this case, perhaps a touch of vibrance. And for the tone curve, I might even, I might even like keep a plane right there and then raise my highlights just a little bit. You can toggle before and after views using the S key. So you can kind of get an idea, you know, how far off from the original photo am I based on these adjustments. Let me press the S key once. So this is the photo that we adjusted for screen. I did all my, my processing there. And this is the photo afterward. Looking pretty good. It looks like I've lost still a little bit of clarity in the boat. So maybe I'll nudge up clarity just a little bit more before and after. That's pretty nice. There's one other view that I'd like to show you that you can compare the two photos next to each other. And that is over in the comparison view. So if I hover over this, you're going to see that we have a reference view that's new in Lightroom CC before and after view. So if I click that, Notice it says why, why. This is master photo, this is proof preview. This is the photo on the left that I processed for the screen. And then the photo on the right is my soft proof. And it looks like I've actually added a bit more contrast and maybe a little more punch than I have from my screen view. So I may want to back off my contrast punch a little bit. And what I'm trying to do is make this photo on the right look as close as possible to this photo on the left. And maybe that clarity is still pushed up a little bit too far. And this is the processor. So you dial those things in and you adjust to get these two photos looking as close as possible. I shouldn't even say two photos. It's the same photo, right? The one on the left is processed for the screen and the one on the right is being prepared for the print and you wanna get those as close together as possible. One last thing to check is any out of gamut warnings. And what that means is, are there colors or shadows that the simulation here, our soft proofing thinks might not be represented in your print? You can do that up over here just by hovering over this little right hand side of the histogram. So show destination gamut warning. Destination in this case is a print, right? We've selected a printer paper profile, that's our target. And if we notice, I'll click on that so it stays sticky. You'll see a few little red spots here in these highlights, a couple of dots here in the, the deep shadows, kind of telling me the printer might have trouble representing these fully accurately. And this usually happens in very bright highlights or very deep shadows. Or if you maybe you had an older printer that doesn't represent as many colors, perhaps uh, certain gradations of color may be a problem. Uh, so you need to check these things. It's not necessary that you correct every single one of them. Like in this photo, I'm not really gonna make any adjustments to try to rein those in because I've printed this and I know my printer uh, can handle it. And when I get the print and I look at it, it looks good to me, but it's a good thing to check before you finish your print. Because if you have a large area of your photo that is out of gamut, you probably wanna make some adjustments, whether it be to color, to highlight, to shadow, to keep those in check. And once the soft proofing is complete, you're ready to print the photo on whatever paper printer combo you chose. So let's recap the major things here. Is number one is you need to choose a printer paper profile. Soft proofing is all about creating an image that is ready to be printed on a particular printer with a particular paper. 
Second, work on a copy of your photo. Do your soft proofing on a copy. Don't mess up your original image. You went to a lot of trouble to dial in the settings for your on-screen work. Make a copy, do your soft proofing there. And because you may have soft proofs for several different types of medium. Maybe you're gonna print something on matte, maybe you're gonna print something on luster. Those all have different characteristics and you can have a soft proof for each one of them. And lastly, when you're soft proofing and checking things that are out of gamut warnings, remember they are just warnings. As you get to know your printer better, you'll be able to recognize, I can be okay with these few you know, dots in the highlights or, uh, or this particular shade of orange is going to be fine because I've printed enough and I know my printer can handle it. If you have large areas of the photo that are showing out of gamut warnings, you probably want to make some adjustments to the processing so that those come more in line with what the printer can handle. But don't go overboard in trying to correct every little dot and every little uh, speck that shows out of gamut warnings. That will do it for the soft proofing video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you like the other videos that are in the printing series. Check them out. And if you've got questions about printing or anything else photography, let me know. I'll see you again soon. Bye.